welcome to Pecan Corner. I'm Tina and today I'm going to make barley blueberry muffins. Okay, I've got a, as I've mentioned in, in my past video, um, Paul has developed uh, uh, diabetes and so we're, we're modifying our keto diet, his keto diet a little bit. And one of the things that um, that we've discovered is that barley is a very low glycemic grain. Um, he can eat even two servings of barley at a meal and it does not affect his blood sugar. Uh, whereas the, the smallest amount of carbs, like for at Super Bowl Sunday, he ate some, um, um, some commercial um, battered um, onion rings and, and uh, uh, stuffed peppers and uh, jalapeno poppers and, and those uh, just that little bit of carbs really pushed his blood sugar up so but the barley does not so I bought some barley flour and it's kind of challenging to find some recipes um, that use only barley flour and don't call for adding in wheat flour well wheat flour would would shoot uh, his blood sugar up so I've uh, there's a recipe on the back of the Bob's Red Mill barley flour for a, a blueberry muffin. However, it calls for sugar. And so I have another recipe here uh, for an Estonian barley bread that um, does not use sugar. And I'm going to kind of mix these together and make some muffins and we're going to see how this turns out. Um, we have these blueberries. Paul loves them and they're really good um, for they just have lots of antioxidants in them, but they're really good um, for diabetes, diabetes in particular. And so is the barley. There's something about it. I can't really explain it, but there's something about it that's really good for, they say, for uh, diabetics. So um, I'm, uh, uh, I'm excited about this, and I hope that this turns out right. I've also got a a barley yeast bread recipe that I want to try, but I need a couple more ingredients uh, that I've got to get before I can try it. Um, I know that eons ago, way back, and you know, hundreds of years ago, um, people used barley a lot more for their breads than wheat. Um, it was easier to grow, and um, so it was. I guess it maybe it kept better. I don't know, but. Uh, Anyway, that's what most people ate, so th there's got to be a way to do it. It does have a little bit of gluten in it. It's not as much, near as much as wheat flour, but a little bit of gluten. My berries are already washed. I washed them when they came in. And uh, uh, so since this is a quick bread, or the muffins are, I'm going to use baking soda and baking powder. I'm going to use uh, yogurt. Um, it, the the Bob's Red Mill recipe calls for uh, buttermilk which I don't have, but the other recipe calls for uh, for yogurt. Now, I could uh, sub, uh, replace the sugar that's called for with um, sucralose, uh, which Paul uses as a sweetener, but I don't know that, uh, that they need to be that sweet. I think maybe that uh, with just a little dab of lemon in them, that the blueberries themselves may sweeten this um, this bread enough that, that these, these muffins, I don't think, are going to need extra sweetener. So, I've got my oven heating to 375, and um, let me get me a mixing bowl here. I'm melting my butter. Um, I'm melting half a stick of butter, which is, uh, what, a quarter cup, I think. Let me see here. Yeah, a quarter cup. I can't believe I forgot that. It's funny, things things you know off the top of your head and then all of a sudden one day you just, this is like it's not there anymore. So, uh, the barley flour is really pretty. Um, it's just a, it's a nice pale, uh, kind of a tan color. Um, and let's see, let me wash my hands before I get started here. It's a cold day today. I'm going to make a stew and a little bit of lamb, uh, a lamb stew that's uh, uh, supposed to be a thousand years old. So, uh, two or three thousand years old. So I'm going to try that in a little while and I'll film, film that as well. Get my butter melted. All right, we want to, uh, where's my, okay. All right, so we want one cup of flour. I'm just making a half recipe. 
um, or the equivalent of it right now because I, I want to test this so I don't want to waste a lot of it um, it was a uh, it's not cheap, you know, it's like all these specialty things, they, they come at a cost, and I had, I, but I found, uh, found them at the best price at walmart.com, um, for, for this barley flour, um, okay, and I want a little baking soda, half a teaspoon, there we go. go and uh, two teaspoons of baking soda I mean baking powder excuse me or one teaspoon excuse me I'm, I'm trying to cut it in half in my head and so I'm gonna be have to correct myself what I put down in the comments will be the actual recipe that I used and uh, just a little dab of salt uh, let's get us a we don't want even half a teaspoon of salt just a maybe a quarter teaspoon like a big pinch um, Maybe a little bit more. There you go. Maybe two pinches. Okay. Now then. Where's my... Something to stir with here. Okay, my butter's melted. Let's let it cool down a little bit. I don't want it that hot. Let's let it sit there and cool. Alright, now then, I want uh, some lemon zest. I want a teaspoon of lemon zest. I uh, don't think my... Let me go get my... Uh, my grater. Lemon and blueberries... People use lemon and blueberries together a lot nowadays, but probably 15 or 20 years ago, Paul invented the combination without having read it before. Um, it, it, he, he made a, a lemon uh, cheese, a, a lemon pound cake, and served it with um, with blueberry pie filling, and it was just fantastic. It was just unbelievable, and um, so. Uh, we, we credit him with that, although, of course, <laughs> you know, <laughs> other people came up with it independently, but still, um, we, we like to say he was ahead of his time on, on that. Um, I'm using a fresh lemon here, but a friend taught me a really good trick uh, for, for lemons. If you have recipes that call for lemon juice or lemon uh, zest, to just store the lemon in your freezer. And then when you need either juice or zest, you can just grate the whole lemon and uh, it works beautifully. So uh, I'm starting with a fresh one, but I'm going to stick this just whole, just like this in the freezer uh, when I'm done. I'm not using any juice in this because I don't want that sourness uh, to counteract the. There's a little dab of sweetness to barley, just a natural, natural sweetness. And, uh, um, and I think that, that between that and the, uh, the blueberries, that that's going to be plenty uh, for a muffin. Paul, it, fortunately, it, it does not have much of a sweet tooth. He very rarely craves anything sweet. Um, and when he does, he'll have pancakes with uh, sugar-free syrup or something. Um, and we actually, we use that uh, Walden's Farm sugar-free syrup that... Um, it doesn't have any carbs either, so it's really good. All right, there's that. And uh, uh, it, this recipe, the Bob's recipe calls for vanilla extract. I'm not going to put that in there either. All right, now I want to... Um, I want... Where's my yogurt? Okay, so I want a cup of yogurt. Greek yogurt is great. It does really nice as a replacement for sour cream too, and anything that you might want to might want to use. It's a lot more sour than sour cream, 
So if you're using it in something that's not cooked, you don't want to use near as much of it. At least we don't anyway, because that it just gets too tart. Of course, I'm using a silver plate spoon, so with that acid on there, I need to rinse it off right away. I collect up these cute little, cute little spoons. This is the Campbell's kids. These cute little, cute little silver spoons, and I just put them in a spooner here, and that's what I use for my daily spoons. And it's a, it's a lot of fun. I had them all in a drawer, and uh, had them all in a drawer, and I thought, gosh, what, what can I do with these? And then it was duh. Get that spooner out. You know, this was a family. This was a family piece. And uh, if I don't use these things, our grandchildren are not going to know that those were family things. So I have to. Uh, I have to start using those heirlooms so that the grandchildren will see them being used, will know that they were mine, and then I can talk to them about them. I can say, "This belonged to your great grandmother. This belonged to your great great grandmother. This belonged to Amos." And and. Uh, and let them know uh, where all this stuff comes from. Because if it's just packed away in a box, they'll never see it. And then I'll die, and then they'll they'll just say, Oh, look at all this stuff. Well, it must have just been antiques she was going to sell, you know, and nothing will get kept. So I'm kind of uh, moving in that direction to start pulling things out and making use of, uh, of those things. Um, my great-grandmother... She was so frugal and so careful, and when she passed away, she had all these beautiful things uh, stored away. She was saving it for good, and she never used it. And uh, we, we shouldn't do that. We should, we and our, our families deserve our best, and they deserve those wonderful things. So uh, that's, my <laughs> that's my little jabbering for today. <laughs> Let's see if I get enough. Let me get my butter here to see if it's cooled down enough. Okay, yeah, I can stick my finger in there. Don't want to cook that egg with hot butter. <laughs> okay. I finally broke down and bought some new kitchen towels a while back at, out at Burke's Outlet. <laughs> my other ones were... Paul bought them shortly after we moved here, and I finally realized, gosh, they're, they're uh, <laughs> you know, 12 year, 10, 12 years old. So I, uh, I didn't, this time I didn't get them all that matched. I may, if I ever find a good deal on some that I really, really like, I may go back and do that. But uh, for now, uh, I've just got a bunch of different ones, and I put all those other ones into the grab bag. <laughs> so, okay. Now then, let's put our blueberries in here. I washed these and then dried them again. Uh, let them dry in really well before I put them back in their boxes um, when I bought them. And that way, they're just clean and ready to use when I pull them out. And I'm not having to wash them every time I want them. Put another egg in this because I think it needs a little bit more liquid. It's kind of a thick batter. I might even put a little dab of water in it to thin it down just a slight bit. This where you can see it. Gosh, I'm throwing it everywhere, aren't I? I hate making a mess. It's funny because I'm I'm naturally kind of uh, I'm not a tidy person, uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> but at the same time, I'm. Uh, my, my messes are, are a different kind of a mess, I guess. Everybody has their own thing that they do. I'm going to add a little dab of water to this. 
Use tap water, but let it run a minute or two and only take it out of the cold water side. That's how we do in old houses. That's if the folks in, in all these cities that make the news would know to do that, they wouldn't have to worry about getting lead in their, in their bodies. There we go. That's much better. That was about two tablespoons of water that I added there. And that was that was good. See there, it's nice and nice and liquid. Okay, now now then let's uh, put this in our I've got my little paper liners here on my this uh, stew that I'm going to make this, e this afternoon um, has lentils in it and then you serve it over barley but lentils are also a low glycemic um, uh, food so um, even though they have carbs unlike other beans they this will be the first time Paul will have eaten them since since he's had his diabetes and so we'll we'll see um, but they should not push his blood sugar up any more than than the barley does This is this won't rise very much. They say that the barley doesn't rise a whole lot. So the eggs and of course the bacon powder reacting to the yogurt will be what causes it to rise. been eating a lot of chuffles. Um, they, they work really well. We, we can make everything from waffles to bread out of them, you know, just the same thing, just the way you use it, the things that you put on it. His therapists are still coming. His physical therapist uh, released him yesterday. Um, he can, he is Still has a long ways to go, but he can stand up and he can walk enough to, to go uh, um, about, about 30 feet into the bedroom and, um, or from, from bedroom to the living room. Um, I still follow behind him with the wheelchair so that if he gets shaky, uh, he can sit right back down and not, not risk falling. Uh, but. Uh, he is making progress, so we thank uh, thank you for your prayers, and, and uh, God is good. Um, Paul is feeling better, and he's got a little more energy now. His doctor has him taking a, a full-sized aspirin every day uh, to prevent future strokes, and she said he's to take that even if he's having dental work or surgery or something, he's not to not to ever miss that one a day. Um, so, obviously, what all what we've always heard is still conventional wisdom uh, that, that they use, the aspirin really does help prevent strokes and uh, and um, heart attacks. All right, I'm going to put this in the oven for uh, 18 to 20 minutes. And then we're going to come back and see how they are. Middle of the oven. See you in a bit. Okay, there's my timer going off. Let's take these out and give them a test and see if they're done. They look beautiful. They rose up just about the right size. I have them feeling pretty full. I prefer to use a toothpick for testing rather than a than a knife, but you can use a knife if you don't have toothpicks handy. Looks like they're all completely done. There's nothing sticking to the toothpick. All right, they're done. Oh, we got that one into a blueberry. <laughs> all right, well, I'm gonna set these onto a rack to uh, to cool. Have I shown y'all my new my new uh, hot pads? I uh, bought these at an antique store. There's a lady that that works in there that that makes them. 
and most of the time homemade hot pads are not thick enough but she uses she uses old cutter quilts but she does two thicknesses of them so it's not just the one thickness it's a double thickness so they're plenty thick enough and uh, but aren't they cute and uh, I thought they were just great fit with my kitchen <laughs> and uh, okay let's see here we get the racks out whoops oops these little racks are one of those things they sell them at the dollar store too i think even dollar tree has them literally for a dollar so you don't have to spend a lot uh, to get them they ended up end up being handy for a lot of things um, it, both in cooking and in um in just other kinds of things if you're drying things they're they're handy They smell good too. They have a really nice, nice fragrance to them. It's definitely not, you can definitely tell it's not, not a uh, flower, but uh, it's really a nice flavor, nice uh, aroma. They'll cool, quick, cool quicker outside of the pan. That's why you put them on a rack. Um, is so that they cool off quicker and they don't get, uh, you know, condensation underneath them. All right, now we're just going to let those cool for a little bit and then we'll try them out. Okay, these have cooled off and uh, I've just had a taste of one. The uh, blueberries cooked beautifully. Oops, let me hold and get it where you can. I've got it, <laughs> I've got it zoomed in, so I'm going to be careful to keep it in line there. Uh, the blueberries cooked beautifully, and uh, mm, mm. these are moist enough that they can be, they won't need any extra butter on them. They're really smooth, and uh, I think you can see that the, let me get one that's not got as many blueberries in it so we can see the crumb a little bit better. Let's see, this one, here we go. Okay, this one's got fewer blueberries. Let me get rid of those little pipers. Okay, there we go. Now, then see how the top of it cracked just slightly, like kind of like a cornmeal one would, but it doesn't have a cornmeal texture at all. It's a nice, smooth texture, and uh, there we go. It's very much like a bread texture. Um, and uh, without the berries, it'd make a great little dinner dinner um, muffin. Um, but the berries themselves are just sweet enough that it doesn't really. It, it, I, I did right to not put any sweetener in there because the berries themselves blend with it really nicely. That's beautiful. I'll definitely be making these again. And I'm looking forward to uh, seeing how Paul likes them and uh, how they do on his uh, on his sugar. So, um, thanks a bunch. I appreciate you all watching and, and stopping by my kitchen. I'll see you again soon.